this is going to be one of those patrols, isn't it? One of those patrols where nothing happens for days on end, only to suddenly be interrupted by a burst of terror. We have been patrolling this area for weeks now, without finding any worthwhile targets, and nothing has happened apart when we were found by those aircraft. An experience that is very fresh in the memories of the crew, but already, just days after, the same old routine has set in. We keep sailing back and forth. The calm rhythm of the engines reassures us. The watch crew keeps scanning the horizon and the skies. Everyone else on board performs his duties. In their free time, the men tend to their personal belongings, play cards, read books, or for the umpteenth time, reread the letters that they received from their loved ones just before we left the port. I feel that the mood on board has shifted. Gone are the eagerness, bravado and lust for adventure that is so typical for a crew that is just leaving port. It has been replaced by a sorrowful atmosphere, by a longing atmosphere. The men are looking forward to returning to port, regardless of how many ships we sink before that happens. The river has worsened, which only adds to the misery of the man. One very welcome distraction is the radio. This far out at sea, far, far away from Germany, and anyone who would be inclined to report us to the police, the men do like to listen to the BBC from time to time. I allow this to continue. For one, it is impossible for me to monitor the radio man the whole day. Any attempt to isolate the crew from the world would just be futile. Sometimes the English broadcasts contain information that, while not directly saying it, alludes to the supply shortages that they are having in England. I think it is important for the man to know that the work that we are doing out here has an effect on the enemy. Also, this far out at sea, the reception of German radio channels can sometimes be a bit patchy. And then there's the issue of propaganda. When comparing the news from both sides, it seems that our side is much more selective with the truth. We learn much more about the failures of the Italians in Albania, Greece and Africa from the BBC than we do from the German news stations. Well, I really shouldn't be surprised. At the end of the Great War, when everyone on the front lines knew that it was over, that the complete collapse of the front lines is imminent, and a victory impossible. Newspapers in Germany still wrote about counter-offensives in the making that would turn the tide of war. It's better to not think too much about these things. We are continuing our patrol, hoping that an engagement will come in the near future that will turn our fortunes around and allow us to go back home victorious before our supply situation forces us to return home with so many torpedoes. Damn it, the aircraft alert in the middle of the night. Full speed ahead. It's too late to dive. And we can't even man guns. The waves are too high. Ah, oh, this is bad. Here they come. Shit, have they dropped something? Turn the boat. It's the damn PBYs again, the Catalinas. Okay, dive the boat. There's nothing else we can do. Dive, dive, dive. Give me that one up here. 150, bring us down. Come on, come on, come on. Dive the build. Dive the build before they come back. Okay. We're going below. Turn the build. We have to change course. Come on. Engines are engaged. Drop. Drop fast. Drop fast. He 
if this if this is the same the same squadron of Catalinas, then they are carrying depth charges. We need to go deep immediately. Come on, come on, come on. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, here it comes. This is pretty close. This is actually very close. Jesus Christ. This is above us. Hello? They are certainly enthusiastic. And they have rattled us. But we are still fine, I think. Down to 100. Keep diving. Jeez. Hello there, and welcome to another episode. <laughs> oh no, another episode that starts out like this. Where I have to greet you while we are getting depth charged by the same bunch of Catalinas as the previous time. Yeah, welcome to a new episode of this amazing campaign full of surprises. After we have been surprised in the previous episode by them dropping depth charges, in today's episode we are... Alright. In today's episode we are surprised by them dropping depth charges and attacking us at night. It is very dark out there. Very, very dark. I'll show you. It's this dark. But these things here... Oh. It's difficult to get it into the picture. Look at this thing. Pretty. I have to give them that, they are pretty airplanes. But they have found us at night. This is where we are. Navigator resume our course. This is where we are, still in our patrol area, on the rock hole bank. They are obviously patrolling the rock hole bank. It might be a wise thing for me to move my patrol zone further west into the deep waters. That might actually be a good idea. They have actually come out here during the night time. They are patrolling the Rockall Bank at night. So that's a new horror that we need to deal with. And there was... Now, going back to the previous episode really quick. Uh, a lot of you pointed out, and rightfully so, that I should have dived as soon as I spotted the airplanes. The thing is, I really thought they were coming on much faster than they were, and that I wouldn't have enough time to dive before they reached me. Some of you even said that if I had dived, they would have been above me just in time to drop the depth charges directly on me. So, who knows? Yeah, in hindsight, maybe I should have dived immediately. But right now, there was no time to dive. Definitely not. It was seconds in between um, my crew spotting the plane and, well, me diving. It was really maybe one, maybe just two seconds in between my crew spotting the airplanes and me hitting the record key. It was that quick. And that is a completely new, absolutely terrifying, horrifying situation that we find ourselves in. Airplanes are searching for us at night and they are capable of finding us. Even this far out here. And if we get attacked at night, we have no time to react. Let's observe. Uh, give a quick glance of our boat here. Nothing seems to be damaged, so there's that at least. The aircraft didn't damage us. But the depth charges, the depth charges came terribly close. They were really, really close. 
they rattled the whole boat. Right then. Let's slow down the engines a bit. I don't have another choice but to stay submerged for. Well, maybe until midnight, local time. Then we'll surface recharge batteries and hope. Hope they don't find us again. Yeah, that's the plan. We will go ahead and decrease our depth. Bring me up to 20. Okay. Right then. What a start to today's episode. Let's see what else we can find, what other trouble we can get ourselves into. I'm still hoping that we'll find a convoy out here, but so far... So far these hunting grounds have really not been what I expected them to be. Maybe if we were further south we would have an easier time up here. There isn't really much happening. No ships sighted, nothing. Let's hope that that changes. For now, let's take a quick break and we'll resume once we have any further developments. Well, here we are again. I have just received a new radio message. It is now the 28th of January and there has been a convoy sighted in grid AL6637. Heading east, speed unknown. If we look at the map, I have calculated an intercept course and this is where we are going now to hopefully intercept that convoy. Still, it's gonna be... We are going to need a lot of luck to really intercept the convoy down here. And we will be burning a lot of fuel to get there. Ah well, let's just see if we can be successful with this. And as we race down there, I hope my watch crew stays vigilant. And that we are not surprised by any more airplanes. Alright, let's go. We have just received another radio message, and it's another report, this time from, the, from another U-boat. There is a convoy in AM4133, course east, speed 5 knots. I have already plotted an intercept course, and now I have a decision to make. This report is much newer than the last one, and the distance to the previous no, the distance to the current position of this new convoy isn't very far. So maybe I should turn around and go hunt down that one because I have a higher chance of actually finding it. I've already calculated an intercept course. Let's see. We can be in that area in four hours. We are turning around. I'm making that decision. But I'm also making the decision to... Dive the boat. Get us down there. Slow us down. While I'm here, I want to use the opportunity to listen. Maybe... Maybe we can hear something. Maybe this convoy is approaching and might be close enough to us that we can hear it. In that case, I would of course go for the contact that I can hear. We'll see. 
We are still in a turn, but the boat is now diving. Bring me down to 35 meters. Increase our speed a little bit. Okay, I need to transfer this guy manually. There we go. Bring us down to depth. We have more than enough depth to play with here. <laughs> we can't even determine how deep this area is. Our echo load here doesn't reach deep enough. It only goes up to 1000 meters. Let's go to the hydrophone station. And let's wait until we are at depth. Then we'll start to listen. That's our own engines back there. Derzeitige Tiefe 3-0. Alright, we are beneath 30. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Stop the engines. Okay. And now we listen. Very carefully. Is there anything that we can hear? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing all around. Okay, so much for that. Back to speed. Surface the boat. We're going up. The boat is pitching up and it's picking up speed. So we'll be back on the surface in no time. I am. Um, I really should do a periscope check before I surface, but we have been underwater for such a short amount of time that I feel safe enough to disregard it for now. And there we go. Already back on the surface. Excellent. Good. Let's make sure that my crew is in order. Now that we switch over to the other engines. Nicht genug Besatzung an den Dieseln, Herr Kaloin. Yeah, thank you. I really need to pick up a new machinist when we get back to port. I must not forget about that. Okay. We have surfaced again and we are racing ahead towards the possible intercept point with, the, uh, with that convoy that was reported. Five hours as soon as we pick up our speed. Five hours. No, four hours it was. We should be there in the early morning hours. And then we should make contact fairly soon. I hope to see you then. Welcome back. We have just received another radio message. Orders to all U-boat commanders. All U-boats close to court have to follow his position. Grid AM4130, attack convoy SC19. So there we have our orders officially to go after that convoy. We are close to his position. Apparently there's a big convoy somewhere in front of us. Let's go and get it. Let's go and get it. We are continuing the chase. Almost sunrise. Actually, I can see a sliver of the sun just climbing over the horizon. We have um, 
arrived in the patrol area. It is now 8 o'clock in the morning, local time, and we have received another radio message. U-93 has made an attack on the convoy. They have retreated off to AM-4125, reporting results of night attack on convoy SC-19. They sank the Greek SS Icantarini, 4,929 uh, tons, British SS King Robert, 5,900 tons, and British tanker WB Walker, 10,500 tons. Wow, that's juicy. Good job, Court. I hope you left some for us, and I hope the convoy has not changed its course due to those attacks, which is very much possible. We might, um, we might be unlucky and not find a single target because the convoy has changed its course. We'll see. Let's continue the search for now. Welcome back. It looks less and less likely that we'll find the convoy. Very unfortunately. We have received another radio message just now that might confirm my suspicion. From U-106. At 6.07, detector two freighters straggled from convoy. Escort destroyer. 7.15, attacked and sank one of them. Egyptian SS Sesostris. 3,000 tons almost. They are right now in AM-1988. Which is, if we look at the map, AM19 is north of us, and if I pull this down, 1988 is in this area here. So it looks like the convoy scattered off to the north, or maybe scattered in all directions, just not the original one. We might be left empty handed here. We might very well be left completely empty handed. Let's continue for now and hope for a little miracle. Ah, looks like it's gonna be a very lovely sunset. Unfortunately, this also means that... No, we didn't find the target. We didn't find any ships, no sign of the convoy. It must have changed course and just completely scattered into all directions as the U-boats attacked at night. Well, I guess the U-boats need some better coordination to be more effective. I'm abandoning the search, we are going north, back into our own original patrol area, and we'll continue to patrol it in hopes of finding something. Well, that's it for now. Let's continue. Well, hello there. We have a contact spotted. Bearing 5-6. Yes, there is indeed something out there. That might be a straggler from the convoy. Maybe. Just maybe. Turn that way. Increase our speed a bit. The weather, as you can see, has not improved. Quite the contrary. Let's get a weather report. Wind speed 11 meters per second. That's fine. Depth on a keel in this area. More than enough. We are currently still in AM19, just on the edge of the rock all bank. So we have to be a bit careful with the depth because it will rise very, very fast if we go that way, further to the north um, west. What do we have in front of us? That looks like some sort of tanker, actually. Or some kind of bulk carrier, maybe. No, probably a bulk carrier. It's going right to left. I can see the funnel in the rear. In that case, set course that direction. Let's head it off. I still can't tell what we are looking at. 
nationality. No idea. That's a very interesting shape, isn't it? It looks like it has the bridge in the front. It's a long one. Oh, this is promising to be a big catch. Bridge in the front. Then a huge cargo hold. Then funnel in the rear. Maybe it is a tanker after all. Bring the yeah, user to the bridge. Let's have a look. What do we have? Can I determine the nationality of it? No, I can't. Too far away still. Visibility not good enough. Total darkness is fast approaching. Let me make sure that, it is, that this ship is alone. Looks like it. Traveling alone, are you? Oh, you poor bugger. This is not gonna end well for you. Not at all. Next question. Is this thing armed or not? Right now I can't see any armaments. But I have to acknowledge that I'm also just too far away. To spot any even if they are present. No chance. That thing is certainly looking like a good catch. If it is an English ship, that is. No, wait, I think I can see a gun on the stern. There is something there. Come on, stop rocking so much for just a moment. Oh, the boat is pitching a lot. Here's the chance. Yeah, there is an armament on the stern. They have a gun. They do have a gun. I don't know how, fa how fast they are going, but yeah, we are increasing our speed. Turn. I'm gonna position myself somewhere ahead of this thing. Let's hope they don't see us while we race into position. How's the horizon looking? Which way does have the darker horizon? Uh, it doesn't seem to matter right now. The horizon has the same brightness all around. Still, I might... Bloop. <laughs> so it looks like it might be a bit darker that way, so maybe I want to cross the target's course. Yeah. Well, let's continue this mad dash, and I'll resume the video once we are in a better position. Welcome back. As you can see, it has become darker than it was before, which is not a bad thing because we are quite close to this target and we are about to pass in front of it, so we will know its true course. That's an important piece of information to have. Let's make use of our user here. We keep it pointed at the target. Come on. Waves don't mess with me now. We are almost there. Almost there. I need a weapons officer. Okay, there we go. Mark. Mark this position. 
that we were in. There we go. This is good. Now our weapons officer. Target was seen at this bearing here. Which means they are traveling on a bearing of 275 degrees. Let's draw that. 275. There we go. Good. They have not seen us, they have not changed course, but I'm also quite sure by this point that we are seeing an English flag up there. It's a red flag. So that is a valid target, which is good. Get the user off the bridge before it gets damaged by the wave smashing over the conning tower. Damn, the seas are rough. Give me a new weather report. Still 11 meters per second. It feels like it's rougher than that. Oh well. By the way, another thing. The target, I think, is actually a lot smaller than I first imagined. It doesn't look particularly large. So we will have to be a bit careful with how deep we set the torpedoes. For a wind speed like that, I can set them to... Well, I have to, to set them to at least 4.5 meters deep. Ideally a bit deeper than that. We might make use of our stern tube here for that target. Next thing that we need to gather is the target's speed, of course. And that will be difficult in these con- Jesus Christ. That will be difficult in these conditions. Oh my god. No, it really will be. I'm debating whether I should dive for that part just to stabilize my boat. Give myself a bit additional stability. I'm afraid that it will cost me too much time though. Nah, let's do it. Periscope depth. Everybody below deck. Bring us down there. Come on. Let's go into the conning tower, go to the attack periscope. Are we diving? Yeah, we are. Good. That should stabilize our boat quite a bit. Small speed ahead. Here comes the target. The target is not slow. I don't think so. My fear is that we are losing too much time by doing this. We'll see. We will see. By the way... I still have some time. I do want to do something, use an opportunity here to draw a line heading directly astern from my own boat. And crossing the target's course, just like that. Because I will also use this opportunity not only to measure the speed by the target's length, I will also start a plot. We should have good results that we can compare to each other. Here comes the target. I hope that YouTube allows you to see what is happening right now. It is becoming a bit dark. Okay, target almost there. Here we go. Start the clock. Target length uh, estimation 130. 
And that is actually a tanker. I can see the pipes along the deck here. Those are not cranes, those are pipes, I think. Well, those are cranes, but you know what I mean. Let's go... There we go. 28 seconds. I shouldn't have stopped the clock, actually, now that I think about it. Let's do something like this. Bring the line down a bit. Target is actually somewhere here right now. Start the clock. Uh, what I did it? Oh, I said 28, didn't I? Yeah. 28 for 130, that would give it a speed of 9 knots, which is very believable. Okay, increase our own speed. Lower the periscope. I will turn on a parallel course. What did I say its course was? Uh, this one. 275. Turn to 275. Surface the build. Not 271, what are you doing? No, it's okay. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy. Neuer Kurs 276. Time. Still have some ways to go with the time. Coming to the conning tower at this point in time was a mistake, but here we are. Ah, damn it. Flank speed. We are almost parallel to it right now. Got them waves. Let my diesel breathe. Armed or not armed? Good question. Armed. Gun on the stern. Confirmed. We have been sighted. God damn it. Uh, periscope depth. Before that gun swings around. Here goes nothing. Turn in. We are going to attack with tube 2. Tube 2, depth 5 meters, impact medium speed. This is gonna be a quick one. Can't make use of the attack plot anymore because they will, of course, change their speed now. Shouldn't matter too much if we manage to get close enough. There they are. Turn the build. Keep turning. Definitely have slowed down. Down periscope. Don't 
turn the boat, then slow down. Distance will be close, I'll leave it at 500. Speed, for now I'll set to 7. We'll be shooting at their starboard bow. What I feared would happen, did happen. Um, the problem was that that's not a slow ship, and when I made the decision to dive the boat, I had to fear that by doing so, I would give up a lot of um, distance to the target. And when I surfaced, I saw that, yeah, that had happened. I was much closer to it than I had anticipated, and of course they spotted me. Completely my own mistake here. Should have been more careful. Right, the periscope is vibrating. Slow down. We need to slow down before we can see anything. The boat will slow down very soon. There we go. Start. Let's see if their speed is changing. Slow down, we are getting close. Actually, I might have to fire right now. Speed 15 at half length. No, half length is about now 20 seconds. That would mean 40 seconds for the whole thing. Should put them at 6 knots. We would have to... Yeah, well, let's go with 8. 7.5. We are so close, it doesn't matter too much. Open the tubes. Fire. Torpedo is in the water, racing towards the target. Please impact. There we go! Oh, that was a good, solid estimation. What? Are you deaf? <laughs> I don't think it missed. That very much looks like a solid hit. Nah, that thing is a hit. This ship is doomed. Question is, will we have to finish them off or not? Parallel course. They are burning. And leaving burning fuel behind them in the water. A torpedo should be enough to get rid of this ship. We hit them amidships right into the cargo holds. Look at this trail of fire that they are leaving behind themselves. God damn, this game can be beautiful. After all these years. I mean, how old is Silent Hunter 3 now? The modders did an amazing job with this game. So much stuff added that wasn't there. And so spectacular. I mean, look at this. It's... It's losing its the contents of its cargo hold. And the raw oil has ignited and is now burning on the surface. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Down periscope. Increase our speed. So that we can keep up. Down to 20. We are going to take a look at this. I mean, look at this. Just leaving a solid line of fire behind itself. This is great. This is absolutely great. Ah, look, they had an NA gun on the front too. That's what opened fire at us. Thankfully, didn't hit. But this thing is going down. I can feel it. I 
and we can confirm that it is indeed a Commonwealth ship. This thing is... I'll, I'm giving it about 15 minutes. Although tankers can be notoriously hard to sink. Back to our own boat. What I didn't do until now is get somebody on the hydrofilm, which is a big oversight on my part. So let's correct that right now. Also, that allows us to listen to this. That's the sound of a ship that's not doing too well. Are the screws, the engines are still turning. They're still going. The question is how long. We'll stay with them. We will stay with them and we will actually turn to 300. Increase our distance to them. So that we can once again surface and, if necessary, deliver another shot while we are surfaced. Right now, though, we can make sure to load another torpedo. I am once again leaving one of the tubes empty. And I'll tell you in just a moment why I'm doing it. But let's first see... is the reloading commencing? Yes, but I don't want to wait 20 minutes. So let's bring in more crew to hasten the process. 11 minutes, that's the standard time. Now, why am I constantly leaving one of the tubes empty? You see, I want to leave myself a bit of flexibility in how I want to attack my targets. Do I want to attack with electric torpedoes? Or do I want to attack with steam torpedoes? If I have one tube empty and I have a steam torpedo loaded in tube 2, and I decide that I want to fire a full spread of electric torpedoes at the target, then I can simply pull out the one steam torpedo and load the two electric torpedoes. A process that will take about half an hour. You can... Yeah, you can count with about 11 minutes for each step of the process. Removing a torpedo and loading two other torpedoes. So that's about half an hour. If I had an electric, uh, a steam torpedo in tube 3 as well, it would need more time. So I'm saving a bit of time there, giving myself a little bit more flexibility. If, on the other hand, I decide that I want to make an attack with all the steam torpedoes that I still have in the forward tubes, then it's also quite simple. I load another steam torpedo, remove one electric torpedo, and load the other steam torpedo in as well. So that's just a way to give myself a little bit more flexibility. Right. With that all set, I will leave my crew to their task to load up another torpedo into that tube and either the target will have sunk until then or we will have to contemplate if we want to fire another torpedo at it. So let's wait a little bit. Welcome back. We have just received confirmation that she is going down. That's it. They are sinking. We didn't have to wait long. The damage torpedo hit in the midsection. Well, the damage was just too severe. They are sinking. And, well, what can I say? In this position where we are at right now, on the edge of the rock hole bank, in this weather, I wouldn't want to be them. I really wouldn't want to be them. They are basically doomed. It will be quite some time before some ship can get out here to rescue them. The tanker will slip beneath the waves very soon. Depth under keel. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Tiefe under keel is 160. 160, okay. So we have a depth of about 170 meters here. Let's have a quick look at our logbook. What did we sink here? 
A large oiler, type 3, 7,490 tons. Huh. It was actually larger than I expected, just by looking at it. I must have gotten the dimensions all wrong. But regardless, that thing is going down. That thing is definitely going down. Let's take a quick look at it while we still can. Yeah, the crew is off the ship. No living soul on board. The fire has stopped, probably because the cargo hold has been just completely flooded at this point. I... I can't see any lifeboats. Not right now. Maybe there are some and it's just too dark for me to spot them. Maybe they are somewhere behind the ship. Left in its wake. Jeez, I do hope that this thing is not sinking with all hands. I really do hope so. Well... By the visible light, I would say there's still some kind of fire burning. A small one, though. But this thing, just completely doomed. Five minutes and it's gone. Yeah. About five minutes then this thing is gone. I'll bring you back once that happens. Let's jump ahead to that. Wow! From a boiler explosion to a chain reaction throughout the whole ship. It has suddenly been ripped apart, and it is now definitely going down, and rapidly. That's it for this ship. And gone. Just like that. That was quick. That was really damn quick. But I can see that at the very least, some survivors made it off the boat, clinging to whatever they can find, or sitting in these two little dinghies. Let's wish them the best, and, well, hope that they make it home safe. It's enough for us to sink the ship, we don't need to kill the people. We are returning on our original course, we are going back into our own patrol area where we are hopefully going to find more targets. For now, let's end the episode here. I hope that you have enjoyed today's episode, and I hope that you're looking forward to the next one. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, so that you don't miss out on any amazing future content that is incoming. We are almost done with the Eastwind part of the Armor 3 campaigns, and I might throw in some gravity team tactics I think after that. So make sure you have subscribed and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Until then have some really great days and goodbye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.